So I've been off a few days here, but I'm going to start turning it in. This is a piece that I had already to go, and we'll see. I don't even know what it is for sure, but we're, we're going to turn a bowl out of it. When you turn a bowl, a decent bowl, a good bowl, out of a nice piece of wood, it can last for generations. Those are the last two pieces that I turned. People like to say, well, my grandfather made that. That's your legacy, you know, that's, that's what you're gonna hand down. My name is Bob Hawks, I'm a wood turner and I'm 100 years old. I was born and raised on a farm, and so we had a lot of area to roam and, and uh, uh, hunt and fish and do all those things, and I was always curious in now. Uh, digging through the, the rock in the creek beds and where the water flowed and you see these stones in there that had that were um, fish oriented you know they were they were uh, uh, crabs and, and, and fish shapes and I thought how did we're in the middle of the desert out here how did these where did this all happen you know and so I was always curious about that kind of thing and and uh, I'm just curious about everything. How about a cup of coffee, honey? And oh. a muffin on this pretty, this pretty little Bodark plate. Oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing with your puzzle this morning? No, oh, I can't help you with that. We met when he was sent on a job when I first came to Tulsa at Hillcrest Medical Center. And the photography was what brought us together. What well, makes Bob such a good photographer? Like he said, he's curious, and he wants to learn how to do it, how to do it right, and if there's something different, he's gonna figure out how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning. You served in World War II. When you got out of the war, uh, what led you to go study photography? Well, I had known all the time I was in the, most of the time I was in the service, and I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do commercial photography, I knew that. Industrial, commercial, I didn't want portraits or babies or dogs or anything like that. And I knew where I wanted to go. That's what I learned from some of the guys that I talked to in the Army, some of the professionals that had been to the art center where I went to school in Los Angeles. And it was supposed to be or was the first or second best photography school in the United States. I was doing all of it myself. I was processing my own film. I was making my own prints. And I'd get an order for 100 prints, and holy cow, I'd be up all night. Tulsa was sort of in the middle of the oil business and, and helped me get started. I made a lot of contacts in those first few years that were very lucrative. I never thought of, that I was uh, capturing history. I was always interested in everything I photographed, and, and it seemed like a new thing would come up every day. Here's a, here's a whole new thing you've never heard of before. And boy, is this going to be fun. And that's the way I went through my career, was with that attitude that uh, I'm going to enjoy this. This is, this is another day that, that I'm really going to be happy. And uh, that's, that's the way I went through my whole career, looking forward to the next day, you know. This turning thing was always out there. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't even know how a lathe worked, really. Ron and I, have been, we worked together for 30, 35 years. We were both in the woodworking club and I remember him saying to me, 
I'm going to look into wood turning. And I said, you know, I do too. I said, I've been thinking about it, and that's kind of the way it was. One of the kids that worked for me said, this guy's got this little lathe for sale. You want to buy it? If you're not going to buy it, I think I will. I said, yeah, I'll buy it. What is it? It was an old Bay and Egan lathe. It was the lathe that, that they used for spindle turning. And that's all there was, basically, was spindle turning in those days. Well, I was having lunch with a friend of mine, Ernest Wyman, the iron worker. The best iron worker probably ever in Tulsa. He was, he was a special guy. And um, he said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm gonna, I'd like to build a lathe. Would you be interested in building me a lathe? And he said, sure, I'd build you a lathe. So he built this lathe and my God, it was gorgeous. What's it like for you when you get into the shop and you start working on the lathe? As any turner knows, there's two ways you do that. You specifically draw and design a bowl on a piece of paper. Draw dimensions and shape. If you've got a piece of wood that, that dictates that. And so you do that and then you, you caliper it and you be sure that it curves where you want it to. And you, you know what you're doing going in. When you put the wood on there, you know what you want to come out with. The other one is where you stick a piece of wood on there don't have a clue, and that to me is the fun part of, of wood turning. mailbox is down at the end of the long driveway and I went down to the mailbox that day and I pulled the mail out and here was an envelope that said the White House. No address, it just said the White House and I thought what in the world is this? And it was the invitation for him to contribute a piece to the White House collection of American crafts. When Clinton left the White House then he took that collection with him to Little Rock just turned around at different galleries for about three years. We are thrilled to be opening an exhibition of work by Bob Hawks, who recently turned 100 years old. And so we really wanted to honor this very special occasion by showing his work in photography as well as his wood turning work. I don't think they're going to let us in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. 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 <laughs> Those are the last two pieces that I turned. He is amazing. I met him at the gym at St. John. He goes up and down the stairs without holding onto the handrail. And I hold on both sides. We were over there telling stories about you. I didn't know if your ears were burning or not. I don't believe anything anybody tells me. <laughs> He's such an innovative artist. He's had a lot of influence on me. Just the other morning when we had breakfast said, uh, he just gets up every day and goes every day and pretty soon he was 100. I am so proud of this, and I'm so proud that other people get to see what I get to enjoy so much of my life. It's been a long way to 100, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Have fun. Will do.
Has it been a while? It has. <laughs> How does it feel getting back out into the shop? Oh, it feels great. So I've been off a few days here, but I'm going to start turning it in. People like to say, well, my grandfather made that. That appeals to me. I like that idea that people like that things have been passed down to them. Something that they connect to. The man is very giving. He is very loving. He doesn't have a big ego. He, he doesn't meet somebody and say, I have a piece in the White House collection of American crafts. He's a, I'm a wood turner. I enjoy wood turning. I had no idea he, that anybody ever lived to be 100 years old. I didn't, never was a, never entered my head that that was something that I might do. And I just kept going every day and worked and did my thing and the next thing I know I'm 100 years old. Thank you.